What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. Definitely share my channel with the people that you know who are interested in learning about borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder. I have some stuff on here about um, OCD and obsessive compulsive personality disorder. Just some mix of things that have to do with personality disorders. And, you know, I have another channel that I've done that uh, has a lot more followers than this one. It's, but I tried sprinkling in things about uh, personality disorders, and I just find that it needs its own channel, but it's difficult to break into YouTube. And so I have a lot of knowledge. I can probably share with you a lot of things that people don't know that you may not read in the DSM-5, even though I've studied the DSM-5 which is a Diagnostical Manual of Disorders. I studied it backwards and forwards. I've been a counselor for a long time. I'm just insatiably curious. So I know a lot of stuff. So definitely subscribe if you haven't already done so. But this video is, yes, you do have to walk on eggshells with borderlines. And you now there's a book about this, but it is absolutely true for your survival, for your mental health, and it may not seem fair to have to walk on eggshells when you're around borderlines, but if you want to keep the peace, you have to sort of, it's very tricky terrain. You are gonna be hopscotching all over the place because they are easily triggered. They can take something that you didn't mean and turn it into something totally different and it doesn't matter how much you try to explain. You know, they'll start exclaiming, I didn't mean that you, said that you like music, you know, and you're like, well, I didn't say that you said that I didn't like music. I said a lot, and, and it just, the, the smallest thing can turn into a huge argument. It can make them snap, go off. You also have to know that they're, they don't have a good gauge sometimes of their emotions. And so a lot of times they're exclaiming and sounding really angry when they're not angry at all. They just don't have a good gauge of how they are coming across. And even though they are intensely more emotional than your average person, they don't have a good gauge of how they're coming across. If you have a family member that is a borderline, you could find yourself in a turbulent, toxic relationship. I mean, they can get really upset. They can start crying. They can get, you know, they have different triggers. Your person's triggers might be around holidays and you wonder why they ruin every single holiday, but they can think, oh, you're being so mean to me. Everyone is picking on me. And you're like, when was anybody picking on you? And so I have found it's quite tricky. It really is. And your argument might be, yeah, but if they're snapping at me, I'm gonna step back or I'm gonna defend myself, but they're not going to understand what you're talking about half the time when you are getting angry at them. They're not, for whatever reason, they're not gonna take ownership of it. And I think some, they have that, it's a blind spot. It is built in to protect them from, from being abandoned, which is their deepest fear. But you have to learn how to let some things go and not be triggered yourself. Because sometimes they throw out punches, they take digs, they can do things to push your buttons, but you have to kind of learn how to sort of embrace the disorder in a way. And that's not to say that they're not going to go off into a rage no matter what you do. But you can avoid some arguments with them just by saying, you know, I don't have to prove anything to them. I know who I am. I don't have to defend myself because they're not going to get it. So you just have to... You have to sort of eat crow sometimes, basically. You have to um, kind of go around 
them being triggered. Just because they're triggered doesn't mean that you have to be triggered. And it's it's like I said, it's it's a a difficult it's difficult. What I'm telling you to do is very difficult to put into words, but you have to have an understanding that there is a certain level of them that can't help it. They can't help it without therapy, without training, without someone being able to step in and and help sort of be that mirror that shows them this is what you look like and helping them to really gauge that and understand it. Because when they get upset, they truly feel those upset feelings. So if the person can't help that they have, that they are borderline, then, you know, because what happens is a lot of times when you trigger them, they might not speak to you for days or for weeks. And now we have another issue and another problem. So it's just best if you can tolerate by doing some self-talk and sort of step around and over and under and through to get around the argument or from being triggered yourself, then do it. So uh, definitely check out my book, Flip the Script on Love. If you've had difficulty in love relationships, maybe you felt hurt by a borderline or someone who isn't a borderline and you need to do some healing and repair and just tapping into yourself as well, understanding yourself better so that you can attract the love that you want in your life. Check out my book, Flip the Script on Love, and it's on Amazon by Tamara Hunter Zion. I also wrote a book called The Workplace Narcissist. Enjoy. Bye.